Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today I'm going to be trying to fix this Bang & Olufsen Bio System 10. So this is like a boombox, an extremely heavy one, but an extremely thin one. Look how thin that is. And yet somehow they've managed to make it unbelievably heavy, which is nice because it feels like a, uh, a quality product unless of course it's lined with lead on the inside. So I bought this off eBay for about £40. I'll show you the, the list in, in a minute. Obviously it's an expensive product because it's Bang on Olufsen. I've seen spares going for more than what I paid for it but I don't really know if that's the proper price or not. You can put things up for what you want on eBay. It doesn't mean it's actually going to go for that. So the things I've noticed are it's missing this bottom section down here so it should have a nice kind of black glass thing down here or plastic shiny thing that uh, covers this area here the programming area but apart from that it doesn't look to be in bad condition so this came out in 1984 to 1991 and it cost 249 pound back then which wasn't cheap but at the same time it wasn't massively expensive not compared to some of their other stuff i don't think it did too well because it wasn't really offering anything that the cheaper manufacturers weren't doing in fact this has that's this i think had less features than some of the other ones as well as that it's a essentially i think it's a sanyo inside and it actually says on the bottom here made in japan so although it might be designed in denmark it's not uh, it's not Danish, it's made in Japan. So I suppose other people would probably get a Panasonic, a Sony or a Sanyo or something like that for probably half the price and it would work just as well. But saying that, it is kind of nice. It's got this handle here, which can't be removed. It is ridiculously thin. It's designed to be wall hung as well. It can be powered from mains. It can be powered from battery here. And also it can be powered from a nine volt DC adapter at the side. Look at this, which is particularly nice. If you look at the battery compartment here, look at the way they've done this, spring loaded. Little things like that's nice. So the battery isn't going against a spring. You're always gonna get a good connection against this bracket here. So that's nice. We've got two speakers here. If you did wanna connect it up to your speakers, if it was wall hung to get better sound, you have aux in as well. You've got a tape two and phono. You've got a headphone jack here, which is a quarter inch. So, uh, 6.35 millimeters i think and you've got this lovely big long aerial here which all looks to be in perfect condition nice little touches are stuff like this if you look at the tuner for the radio here you move it along like so but then you also have this little wheel here where you can fine tune it so that's nice and if you look closely at things like the volume you can see it's got a tape behind it here which gives it like a, a nice effect as it's moving up and down. Not sure if that's going to come across in the video or not. I'm struggling to hold it one hand because it is unbelievably heavy. We have, uh, yeah, tape, uh, obviously play, record, pause, stuff like that. Long wave, aux in, uh, medium wave, and then we've got some presets for the FM as well. So if you have a look here, we've got FM1, FM2, and FM3. So, yeah, and this would be normal. This would be normal FM here for the one up here. Let me turn that off. So uh, yeah, so you can preset your other FM stations by just moving these little wheels here and then you can see the little guides are here. So that's all nice. And we have some options here for wide stereo, mono stereo and the different types of tape, acoustic mode, which I think is a way of balancing treble and bass and also your balance left and right for the speakers. Now, I got this from eBay and it was sold as spares or repair. Let me just show you the listing. There we go, you can see Bang & Olufsen BO, BO System 10, portable radio cassette player 40. BO System 10, the radio and tape do work, but the sound pulses low, loud, then low. Very good cosmetic condition, blah, blah, blah. So it looks like I paid uh, 40 pound for it plus nine pound postage. I'm not sure if I put an offer in on this one or not, so I might have paid less, I'm not too sure. But anyway, not cheap, but again, not expensive when considering the parts on this are going for a lot more than that there. So I thought it might be an interesting fault the very fact that it says it's going loud then low and uh, yeah I've put a tape in now obviously I can't play you a music tape so you're gonna have to listen to the archers but what you're listening for is it's like pulsing with the sound so check this out oh, okay sorry that's the other side but listen to this this is a fur release like that so that's definitely not right and if you listen to talking you can also hear it 
wasn't going to sell him fly, but I bet he's still got spare cash. Don't we know it? I'll have to work on him. But yet, that immediately makes me think, when I seen the listing to begin with, I thought maybe it wasn't belt related, that it might be something to do with the, uh, you know, the audio side of things or capacitors. But then I thought it might be belts. But the thing is, it's fast forwarding and rewinding fine. You know, there's no hesitation there whatsoever. Again, you're not going to be able to see it. You can hear it though. So that's all fine. Oh, it's all right. Really. I feel absolutely detached from him. Well, what do you think? Are my proposals worth considering? So something's definitely not right with that. Uh, when it comes to the radio, I can't really get a good enough uh, signal to see whether it's happening on the radio or not. So bear with me, let me mess around with the radio a bit and let's see if I can actually find a station that is clear enough to see whether it's pulsing with the sound. My house is awful for a radio reception. Definitely not happening on FM. I can only play this for a couple of seconds. Okay, that's not happening there. Let me see if it's happening on... Uh... Oh no, that was medium wave. Let's see if it's happening on FM. Yeah, and again, although the reception's not great, it's definitely not happening here. Okay, so it is something to do with the tape, which makes me wonder whether or not I even need to, I suppose I do need to check out the belts, but I'm wondering if it's just a tape head problem. I'm wondering by cleaning out the, uh, the tape head with IPA, I wonder would that sort the problem? And you know, the little rollers and stuff. In fact, hold on a minute. I can see something weird is going on with this roller here. Let's zoom right in. I haven't, uh, I haven't looked at this at all on the inside yet. Watch, check this out. Right, watch when I press play here. What's that stuff there? A tape's got caught on that or something, hasn't it? I wonder whether that's struggling to turn smoothly because of something that's wrapped around it. Let's kill power to it. I'm wondering whether a tape's got wrapped around there at some time. Right, I'll tell you what, look, let's let's take it apart. It'd be nice to see the inside of it anyway. And then if I can get to this area here, it might enable me to clean that better. I might be able to just take that bit out, but there still might be something else somewhere else. It definitely looks like that's a kind of brownish, shiny colour, which would be the tape, you know, the actual uh, tape itself. So let's get it over to the blue map, take it apart and see what's going on with it. And then we'll definitely be able to tell whether it's a belt problem or whether it's something to do with the, the reading off it. I'm thinking more the reading off it rather than a belt. Right, let's have a nosy on the inside of this and see what it looks like. I'm thinking it's going to be quite nice. So I can't see any screws on the back here, but there is three screws under here. So let's undo these three and see if it starts to come apart or not. So while we're doing that, let's give a shout out to the My Mate Vince Massive. This month that is Saturnine Cinema, Operational 117, KitDigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Having Fun Repairs, and we've got a new one, a round of applause, and that is Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. So massive thanks to the My Mate Vince Massive, and also the other Patreons as well. Okay, so now let's see if this is, uh, oh yeah, there we go. Right, just because I didn't show you earlier, let me just show you what it says underneath here. So uh, you can see it says type 1521. So uh, I forgot to mention that this is the all black one. You can also get black and aluminium. In my opinion, the black and aluminium looks even nicer. Take this off. 
Oh yes, that's coming off. Well, do you know what? That was a lot easier than expected. Let's see what's happening here. Right, little white wires caught round there. So now that allows me to open up. There's very little room though. And I can't see a way around that. Okay, so we've got a transformer down here. Got a fuse. How am I gonna how am I gonna uh, take the rest of this apart without putting all the strain on these wires? Right, that's that little white one undone, so that's giving me a little bit more room. I can undo this one here. There. What's happening with this one here? Apologies that the camera's not picking all this up. It's just this, uh, I don't want to break them all, you see. Right, this is a... Uh, got another clip here, that's undone. And a clip here. That's undone, and lastly, a clip here. So already, how nice is that? Some clips to undo, so nice and uh, nice and straightforward. Now, what's going on here? Is that, this? oh, it is designed to be like that, but that's kind of been bent over. Yeah. So, is that to do, uh, is that to direct the sound in a certain way to stop the sound from coming out the back or something? Can you see these bits here? Yeah, they both go over the speakers. Yeah. Just want to see what happens with that little switch when you want to plug in the uh, the AC. This AC isn't plugged in at the moment, so it's unplugged from the wall. Just want to see what happens with that little. There's some sort of funny little switch thing here. Oh, that's nice. So I suppose this stops it from, uh, maybe this cuts off the power from the batteries. Do you see this tiny little switch here? Let me zoom in. Right, keep your eye on this little switch here where my finger is. So when I plug it in here, can you see that joins there and then separates? Yeah, okay. So yeah, that must be to stop the uh, to stop charging, you know, stop it charging the batteries. Now, what have we got here? Okay, looks like we got a solder splat on there. That's not very nice, is it? Let's scrape that off. I wonder has this had a repair in its life? There. Hmm. So this is to do with the tuning, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it's good, isn't it? When you see the inside of it now, it suddenly looks a lot older than the outside would have you uh, believe it is. Right, okay, so if we have a look now, they've given us little arrows, haven't they, for the screws, but there's an arrow going off down there. I wonder what that's about. Yeah, arrows for the screws there. Oh, this is the tape here for the volume. Oh, look at that. Yeah, undone. Oh, so you, if you wanted, you could change that, not that you would, but uh, yeah, you could change that, couldn't you? That's nice. This reminds me of, do you remember the other b &O product that I did when we were moving up and down the, the, the volume and the, uh, the uh, tone and the balance and stuff, and it kind of gave that digitized effect, but it wasn't digital, it was just all analog. Kind of reminds me of that. Makes it more futuristic than it actually is. Okay, that's nice. Right, speakers, three, watts, uh, three watt, four ohm speakers. Remember seeing many things like that years ago. I don't actually, I know it's something to do with the frequency, but I don't know uh, I don't know what it is, but I'm not gonna go near it because the wires look incredibly fragile. Now I'm just wondering if I was to now, I don't really wanna get involved with anything to do with the tuning side of things. I wanna get to the tape deck, but I'm gonna have to take this off, aren't I? Because I can't get to it from the front 
You can see here as well, this is where the front thing would have closed on this. It would have had like a bin lid catch, you know, where it's like that, sort of like a hook, and then you push it in and it closes, and then push it in again and it opens. And it would have just been hinged here and here. And that looks like a little rubber buffer to make it close nice. Well, let's undo some more screws. Trying to put them in some sort of order because they're different lengths. Oh, and there's a little daughter board here connected up with ribbon cables that are soldered onto the board here. Really didn't want to get involved with taking... Oh, here we go. I might get away with it. No, unfortunately that string is going everywhere on the inside. But I can see, oh, I can see the belt in there, just in here, you can just capture a glimpse of it there. I am going, oh, that's really annoying, how am I gonna do this now? I know, I can get a, a Sharpie, and I can mark either side of the screw here, and also there's another screw for the volume. So all that's happening is, when you're moving these things here, they're just moving the string because it's clamped onto it, you can see there. I mean, it's an incredibly nice motion, considering it is just clamped on there, but it's going through all these little wheels to make it nice and smooth. So I'm gonna to have to mark the string because the string doesn't move. So there you go, I can mark it nice and easy there. And I'm gonna to have to do the same with uh, this one here. In fact, it looks like they've done arrows here and an arrow here for that exact reason, because why would you have to cut out there? I bet you the service guide for this Maybe you can tell the engineer to maybe put a, a mark either side there. Or maybe there's something on the string that lines it up, but I can't see that. So I'm going to get a Sharpie. Well, the problem I've got is I can't get a Sharpie that far in. Okay, so this is just small enough just to get in there. I've got a bit of a mark on there, so it should be okay. Now, let's get a tiny little screwdriver and undo these. Oh, they're on a little spring. A little spring there as well. I wonder was that one on a spring? Yes, luckily it came out with it. Right, they're gonna be quite hard to get back on, I think. But anyway, now is this gonna is this gonna come off now? Well we, we've definitely got a lot more. Yeah, we have. We just need to undo this one here, this cable here, this connector. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Nearly hit my monitor. Woo! That was close. It's a problem, this thing weighs a ton. Right now, what did I undo there? So I undone that one there, so now that's better. Now we have access here, don't we? Apart from this little wire here. Let's undo this wire. There we go. Now we have access to it, fantastic. So do I need to undo this? Will that give me any more room? I don't think it will. So here we have all the the button presses. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so when you press these. When you press these, which is not allowing me to press at the moment. Oh, because they're all down. So they're all up like that, and then you press them. So they're just going down, and they're just hitting these buttons here. Okay, it might be worth giving them a clean because they look a little bit dusty. That's all good. Got a heat sink here. Oh, there's a chip under there, okay. So we have the motor here, which is feeding 
this here. Now, unfortunately, that's got numerous cracks on it. Now, are they going all the way through? Or is it just surface? Mind you, that's just some sort of big flywheel type thing anyway, so maybe it doesn't matter if it's a bit cracked. To me, the belt looks okay. It doesn't, it's, it's not a gloopy mess. I think the belt's okay. I think it's to do with this, I think I need to get to the other side of this. So now we have to undo some more screws to try to get to the other side, I think. Oh, brilliant. I thought that was going to be a nightmare. Oh, look at that. Oh, hold on, there's a wire. Some wires. Oh, here we go. Fantastic. We got there. We got there. Now, let's see what's happening. Yes, I can see a nice lump of tape here. Fantastic. So even if I had it just pulled it out here, it would have been stuck down here. Let's zoom right in. And I'm thinking this might be quite satisfying. Look at it there. Just there. Let's get the tweezers. Let's get sharper tweezers. Come on, be nice to come out in one go. No, that's not going to happen. Unfortunately, the satisfaction wasn't there. It would have been nice just to unravel it all in one go, but it wasn't to be. It came out in tiny one centimeter and one inch bits, about 10 of them. But eventually, I do get there. Here we go. Here we go, come on. Come out, come out, come out. There, oh yes, yes, yes. That's what, that was a satisfying bit. Followed by this bit here. Now, oh, look at that. Now that's starting to, I think that is free. I think this was causing it to slow down here. I can still see more around the back here, so maybe it should be even freer. Well, I've angled it up differently, and now you can plainly see the bit that's caught behind it as well. Massive bit here as well. Ho, 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 ho. I'm trying to just wrap it around my tweezers so I can get a good grip of it. Here it comes. There you go. There you go. That's it. Now, let's have a look. Look at that, clean, and look how it's spinning now. You can hear it. I think that's gonna be our problem solved. So let's, while we've got it all apart, let's give it a good clean, get rid of the dust, and also let's clean with IPA around here, the head, and also, what's this brown one here? Is that another head for? Maybe that's to wipe it or something. Maybe that's maybe this is to play it. And would this be to record it? What happens when we press record? Does that kick into play? I suppose we're not going to know because they're both on the same track there, aren't they? Let's clean it up. And they were all the bits of tape that I got from it there. So I think it did need to come apart. I, I think although we could have probably got it to play, there would have still been revolutions of that around it. So it wouldn't have been ideal. Maybe, although it might have sounded, uh, the volume might not have been going up and down as much. Maybe there would have been some kind of like wow or flutter on it. Who knows? Right, to begin with, I'm just going to brush away dust. And then after that, I can worry about putting some IPA around the place. Now I'm going to use some isopropyl alcohol just on the head here and around the rollers here, give them all a little bit of a clean. All right, cotton bud dipped in IPA. And 
and I am going to do this here and I'm also going to clean this little roller Okay, so these two were very clean anyway. This black you see is just coming off the rubber there, which is uh, understandable because I've put IPA on it. So now I think I'm going to leave that as it is. Now let's see, do I need to grease up anything on this side? I might just put a tiny bit of the synthetic grease just to see where these lock into place here. You can see how they work there. So they're on a spring. And when they go past that bit there, they just lock in. Ready? Now. There. And then when you press the stop button here, it, uh, it pulls it back to allow it to release more. So when it's there, you see it holds it there. So it's only when it's across that it holds it there. Actually, before I put the IPA away, let's just do these little buttons up here as well. You know what, they're not going to get in that way anyway, that's just the mechanism up the top. But a bit might seep its way down. I'm just going to use some of this, that's Modico EM30L. And I'm just going to take this belt off and just make sure everything's nice and clean. To be fair, the belt does look okay. Yeah, now the cover of this flywheel is definitely starting to break down. I mean, you can see all the cracks here. And when my fingers are going across it, I can feel it's rough. I mean, look at that bit there. Now, I'm not going to pick them off because it's going to make it even worse. But... That's not going to be very smooth for the belt going around, is it? Yeah, that's just uh, that just seems to be degrading. All right, that's back on now. It's quite unusual is if you look at this here, look at the motor. Look at the shape of where the belt goes on in there. I was expecting that to be flat, but it's not. It's like it goes up in the middle. So you would think the belt would want to go either the top or the bottom of that. But maybe that's done on uh, done on purpose to keep the belt. I don't know. I'm not sure what that's not just flat in the middle like this one here. It doesn't seem to be slipping off anyway, does it? Let's put this at the very bottom and see if it works its way back up. That must be a full revolution now. Yeah, it goes back to the middle, doesn't it? Okay. Well, I'm going to get a, t uh, a, uh, a paintbrush, I think, just to brush off all the dust from around here. Okay, so that's cleaner. I think it's fixed, but obviously I don't know. Uh, but I need to put it back together to test it because I don't think, I don't know, I think I'm gonna to struggle to do, it, uh, to do it like this. So now let's get this back, let's get this back together. So as a good old Haynes manual says, it's just a reverse of taking it 
apart, which is a lot easier said than done. So I'm thinking this is probably going to take a good half an hour or so. I will be just fast forwarding it through. If I run into any massive difficulties or if I kind of break something, of course, I will uh, film. Uh, I will uh, slow it down and show you uh, show you that bit. So all we have to do is loosen that up a little bit and then use some tweezers. So let's get that in position here. You can see the middle of it there. Loosen it off. There you go. Did you see that pop underneath it? So now there. Okay, now let's do the other one. There we go, so that's gone under it there. So now we just gotta get the right position. Which is there. And tighten it up. Okay, let's get the rest of it back together. So what you're witnessing here is probably about 45 minutes to one hour's worth of work condensed down into a two or three minute voiceover. So it'd be very easy for me to pretend, yes, pretend, that it all went back together perfectly and just show you the end result. But that isn't what actually happened. What actually happened was I put it back together, gave it a nice good clean, took off the speaker covers, gave them a, a vacuum out, and then I looked at the buttons. The buttons were forced down, not just the medium wave and FM ones, but also the tape playing ones, stop, fast forward, eject, stuff like that. Eject didn't work, fast forward and rewind, went down and straight back up again. So obviously I didn't pay enough attention to how the circuit board went back in. In hindsight now, I fully understand it, but you only understand something when you've gone through it, or you have someone over your shoulder explaining things to you bit by bit. So to uh, do the FM buttons and medium wave buttons, they were easy. All I had to do was put the boom box together upside down. So gravity was holding those buttons in the off position. The switches were in the high position because they're off apart from one of them. So they all lined up nicely. The problem before is when it was on the blue mat, all those buttons were in the on position. And of course the switches are still in the high position, the off position. So when you go to screw it together, all they're doing is buckling against each other and then the buttons get forced down. But anyway, uh, let's now get back on to to this video and let me show you how I managed to get the actual tape mechanism buttons working on this. Well, what I did there is, I'm not saying it's going to work, but I press fast forward or rewind, and now look, the board just sunk straight into place there. So now let's see whether that was the little trick. Oh yes, I think we have it. Let's see if the record button works. Yes, it does. Brilliant, so all I did there was press down, fast forward or rewind, and then the board just went straight in. And also, you're not gonna be able to see it. I'll, I'll zoom in and see that little pin now is going through that little 
whole thing there. Right, so in here, can you see the little pin just sticking through that side of the hole? So I presume that's correct. Anyway, again, I'm not going to know until I actually record something. We should be able to record my voice on this, shouldn't we, because it's got microphones. So now what I have to do is I have to put the strings back on, I have to solder that bit back on, and then maybe we might be done. Yeah, here we go. Okay, hopefully that will be all right. So what I'm gonna do now is put it all back together. I've already cleaned it, so I just need to connect up all the cables, put the back case back on, do up the three screws, and that's it. So next time you see this, hopefully, fingers crossed it will be back together and we'll be ready to test it. Okay, so I'm ready to do it. I promise I haven't tried this already. So this is uh, the first time. I've actually got a horrible feeling that if the tape thing, I'm kind of convinced the tape thing was the problem. But if it wasn't, I don't know if I've got the energy to take this apart again, <laughs> because uh, again, through editing, it doesn't look like I've been on this very long. But I have been on this for hours again, just the fact of taking it apart and putting it back together. And what would be more annoying if it doesn't work is the comments telling me that I should test before putting it back together. But if I was to test it all and it was all working when it was in bits, everybody would stop watching then. That's not the end of the video. So it's always nicer to have a complete working product to test at the end of the video. If I was doing this just for myself off camera, I would have been testing this on the bench when it was partially apart. But I think everybody can, can agree it's nicer for a video to see it working as a complete thing at the end for the finish of the video. Right, okay, come on now. So. First of all, let's see if the radio's doing its thing. <laughs> yes, okay. That's doing its thing. I haven't tuned it in, obviously. Aerial's down. Now, let's see. Please, please, please let it play. Oh! Lovely, lovely, lovely. That's just miles different than it was earlier. Right, fast forward or works, or that's, yeah, that's fast forward. There might not be anything on that bit of tape. He disappeared when the Muslims overran Palestine in the seventh century. After the fall of Jerusalem and the appointment of the first Catholic patriarch. Good, was Perfect. Just going to rewind it, see if it's rewinding. Oh, acoustic mode, let's put that in the middle. Left speaker. Right speaker. Fantastic. And just try the other side. going organic. We agonise over everything. Yeah, but when we first started, it wasn't really me, you know. Mm. Didn't take you long to get your blinkers off, did it? There we go. I think we can call that a success. Whoa, that was a bit of an epic. Now, if there was a service manual, which there could well be, and I was to read it all, then yes, it probably would have gone back together easier. But you know what? It's nice to work things out by yourself. So uh, I think let's end the video on seeing if it works on battery power.
I've just edited this bit in from later on. I completely forgot to press record to see if the microphones are working, and they are. So watch this now. You can see that I've just done record and play there. And now we have a microphone here. Flick it there. And a microphone here. Flick it there. Stop. Rewind and play. Which Watch this now. You can see that I've just done record and play there. And now we have a microphone here. Flick it there. And a microphone here. Flick it there. Stop. Dedicated to some there we go. I could hear the tape still slightly in the background. I don't know. That could be the tape because this is a, a very old tape here. But anyway, the, uh, the the microphones themselves appear to be working. Let's get back to the video. Just before we put the batteries in, I know a few of you will wonder if the radio is still working. The radio is working fine. You can see that I've tuned it in FM. What I did is I just tightened up this little screw for the aerial because the aerial was a little bit loose. There's just a little screw on this side here that I've just tightened a little Phillips screw. And now, if you have a listen, I can only play it again for a couple of seconds. She is a peach, but under there we go, let's get the batteries in. Okay, so I've rated everything and I could only come up with five D cells, but because of the beauty of the Danish bracket, as I'm going to call it from now on, even though it's probably a Japanese idea, I this allows me to put in a C cell as well. So, next time I'm on a building site, if I really want to impress, now I can bring my Bang & Olufsen portable onto the building site and play the archers and then giving in to the little woman watch everybody look at me as if i'm some sort of nutter tell me archer you joke am i allowed to say your bottom still looks good in a pair of cords yes you are what oh it cut off just at the most opportune moments end of the tape so that shows that the eject works at the end as well. So that is it. Let me play you out with a little bit of music. Again, a nice little fix. And I don't think overly boring. I think better than a belt fix with the uh, tape wrapped around there. And just the very fact of taking this thing apart was quite complex. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Take care, everyone.